Oh. The sound of approaching hoofbeats made Meave turn to see Reynard spurring on his panting horse, galloping at a breakneck speed towards her. Ill tidings I bring you, Grace. Clearly. Glad tidings never arrive with such urgency. Our scouts captured a Nilfgaardian messenger. He was traveling in disguise and by night. When he realized his capture was imminent, he strove to destroy the letters he carried. We were able to salvage some in parts. Anything of interest? Yes, there is, I fear. Your Majesty, you must listen. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hail Keritza. A traitor. We might have expected as much. Nilfgaard has shown amply that it abides only by the rules it sets. Since they have not proved able to defeat me in the field, in open battle, they seek other means. I suppose the scroll bears no name. It does not, Your Grace. We know who it is. The messenger. Have you questioned him? Naturally, Your Grace. Alas, he knows not to whom the letter is directed. He was to leave it in an agreed spot. I take it tidings of the whole affair have spread throughout the force? Yes, Your Majesty. The witnesses were too many to keep this fact a secret. We must thus assume the traitor in our ranks knows it as well, and will make no attempt to retrieve the scroll. A dead end. Have we any other leads or clues? None I fear, Your Majesty. We must be alert. Keep a keen eye on events as they unfold, and exercise great caution in forging new acquaintances. Very well. Eyes wide open, all senses attuned. Yours in particular, Reynard. Of course, my liege. How about a particularly suspiciously helpful dwarf guide? Could it be them? Great, and you ruined my morale right after I got so much. Ugh. My lady, we've spotted gold down there, among the debris. We could send a few soldiers to dig it up, but if the rope snaps, those rocks will serve as their final resting place. No risk, no risk, no reward. Send the soldiers down. It's not like I can lose any morale. That's a couple of recruits. Your Majesty, something dwells in this house. A beast with burning red eyes and frightening growl. Perhaps it guards something worth finding, but only a few brave souls would be able to fit inside. Not all might return. <gasps> Ake could have saved my men, but Ake is gone. For he had a taste for dragon's blood, which I could not sate. As are the typical odds in wartime. Send them in. Boy, I got tainted ale. Tell me of this tainted ale. What does it do? do, do, do. What does it do, 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 do? There it is. Mark a unit and boost it by 10. After three turns, a turn starts for that unit. And so. And, and so. Nah. Intercept the letter. <clears throat> Consider your offer accepted. Direct me. Oi. Oh. And her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hail cares there. That was eh, whatever. That's fine. It's fine. We're all good. To the right, eastwards. Meave marches onwards. A puzzle. Not another puzzle. Illyrian winters are mild, frosts are rare, and snow, should any fall at all, melts the moment it lands. Yet Meave's soldiers had now witnessed an expanse of the frosty powder blanket the peaks of Mahakam. They delighted in the harsh beauty of the frigid landscape, then were struck with an ingenious idea to pack snow into small orbs and hurl them at each other. Hilarity and hearty laughter ensued for minutes. That is, 
until a troll joined their revelry. To their terror, he had brought rocks to a snowball fight. Do not let me die. Ow. That's, that's even happening. If it lands... Okay. Every turn on turn start, throw us trolls a snowball at the row with the most humans. If it lands on a row, damage all units on it by two, and force the three highest units to swap rows on their side. My spirit's willing and how, but these damn boots are killing me. There's a time to reap, a time to sow. This harvest will be reaping black clouds. The white of an eye from half a league away. Well, a puzzle I beat in the first try. It's a Christmas miracle. here, do I? Davor's Abyss. Oh. Neve's force neared Davor's Abyss. Signs of beastly feasting were not hard to find. Countless paw and claw tracks were impressed in the blood-stained snow. Among the boulders, bones picked clean were strewn about. Gascon lifted one from the ground. Empty inside, he said. Something sucked out the marrow. Meave soldiers feigned indifference to the grisly sight. They marched on, their stepped rhythm unwavering, a song on their lips. Yet hearing a slight tremolo in their voices, Meave knew they merely sought to drown out their fear. A moment later, a commander's horn sounded, the signal to halt. The queen galloped to the fore of the column and found herself at the edge of a vast, round hole in the ground. She could not see the bottom. Meade drew her reins tight to prevent her mount from taking even one step forward. What is this? A crater? A desiccated lake? A mine of the strip variety, Gabor explained. Treasures we picked and shoveled for here. Diamonds. Till we happened on the beasts, that is. What now? Orion's a dam. Holds back a lake. If we can break it, water'll rush in 
fill the abyss and the tunnels from which the beasts emerge. Just need to get around the mine first. Way down's on the other side. Meave squinted and gazed into the distance. Indeed, there was the dam. And at its foot, a swarm of beasts roiled about. Her soldiers gazed at their queen expectantly, their arms at the ready. She knew well they would rush into battle, in spite of their fear. Gabor! Meave cried out over the whirling wind. Have you barred here in Mahakam? Of course, Your Grace! Then we shall give them good reason to compose this day, on the themes of courage, of heroism, of Lyria! Geops! And with that cry, the queen spurred her mount, grabbed a banner, and raising it high over her head, rushed headlong at the horrid swarm. <sighs> yep. The dwarves delved deep into Davor's abyss, and from it pulled diamonds of unsurpassed quality, and these stones glistened at all the courts of the north. The jeweled crowns capping scepters, studding chalices, and glamorizing ceremonial swords. Some stayed in Mahakam, though in more mundane incarnations, as drill bits or crystal cutters, for example. Yet the days of Davor's diamond delving were long past. Now, only monsters crawled out of his dark abyss. Gain seven charges on your old catapult without it being destroyed. Hint, keep your catapult well maintained on all sides. Every turn on turn start, boost all allied units by one. Every turn, turn start, if there are units adjacent to this one, gain one charge. Then, damage a random enemy by 5 and all other units on its row by 2. If this unit's charge count reaches 7, Meeb wins the battle. Actually, I should have got rid of some trinkets. It's okay. Uh -uh. Let's do this. Catch! My spirit's willing and how but these damn boots are killing me. I smell a leak. Oh, crap. Oh, what? That just happened so fast. Is it finally a battle that I can't win just by overwhelming my opponent with damage? There's a time to win, a time to show.
This could hurt. It's actually bad to hurt the scissors, isn't it? The grace. Monsters approach from all sides. Then... I think I'm pretty safe at this point. Two round, two turns left. Only seems to have necros left. They can't do damage. I bit the white of an eye from our bully away. sang of this battle soon after. For no claws or fangs could break through the wall of shields the Lyrians raised that day. And no scales could protect the beasts from the Lyrians' stinging arrows and blades. Fight! Do not relent! Let us show these beasts! It is they who should fear us! The queen shouted. In the end, the beasts turned to flee, yet Neve's force cut off any chance of escape. A solid wall of men began to push the monsters ever closer to the edge of Davil's abyss. Pressed from all sides, the horrors began slipping over the precipice, screeching terribly as they fell. Got blood. Silence came at last. The queen stood at the edge of the precipice, breathing heavily, leaning on her sword. From the depths of the mine came muted growls and groans. Let's flood the damn hole! hissed Gabor, before any other shite crawls out of it. A rush of icy water suddenly rose, then just as abruptly plunged into the mine, flooding the pit. And where once lay Davor's abyss, now lay Davor's pond. Meave descended back into the pass, exhausted and covered in beastly blood, yet also exceedingly pleased. She was one step closer to Dwarven support in the war against Nilfgaard. Once the Lyrians had put some distance between themselves and the now destroyed monster lair, Meave ordered her men to pitch camp. Then she sent the quartermaster off for food and drink. The soldiers lit campfires, then set aside their weapons. Soon after, lively music and song could be heard throughout the camp. Your Majesty, Reynard said from behind Meave's back. A messenger from the Elder-in-Chief. The queen turned to see a dwarf in a richly adorned jerkin and a shako with golden seams. She stifled her laugh into a smile and lifted her chin proudly, expecting praise and a pledge of aid in the war against Nilfgaard. My lady, your daring deeds have come to the Elder's attention. 
said the dwarf in a measured voice. He's positively irate and demands an explanation. Irate? But why? I and my men, we've aided you greatly. Elder Hoog awaits at the Long Bridge. Yet be ways not to keep him there any length of time. And with that, all the Queen's enthusiasm for a celebration was instantly gone. She waited until the fires expired and the songs died down, then gave the order to march. I mean, if our guide is uh, a spy, then he could be... He's also going to be trying to sabotage our relation with the dwarves. And uh, he's the only... <laughs> we've been doing everything at his suggestion, so... May not have been a good plan. <clears throat> day 234, first day of winter. Going to be mighty rough, so cold pickaxes are freezing to our hands. Had to cease work. Day 239, the snow has started. Two meters a day, no plow and visibility. Chimneys barely poking out of the snowdrifts. Day 245, monsters attacking from all sides. Hard to hold ground, huge losses. Day 250, had to abandon the mine. Retreating to Boros Rump will return come spring. Patrick Fuchs. <clears throat> uh, but it's getting kind of late. Um, partner should be home soon. So I'm going to stop recording right away. Uh, maybe I'll go to camp first and see how things. See if I can build anything. Bloop. That's a good one. It's not often I have. Let's do it. Okay. So, um, I'm Lost Worm. You've been watching The Worm's Turn. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed yourself, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel. Um, it would help me out. I will see you guys next time when I continue playing Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Have a good one.